<laughs> hey lads, we're going to win the deer. Yeah, yeah. It would be about the 80s, really, 79, 80. I used to be the loudest mouth about the guns, like, um, come on, Blythe, keep them going. Come on, here with the lads, and I used to be the loudest, and all the kids used to be standing around us. Well, the first memory I knew he was a supporter, because uh, we used to stand on the terrace to get home, and then he got, uh, he got the job as kit man. One of, one of my friends asked if I would come over and make a, uh, make a few shillings for them, you know, Bob. I went over and I raised money for them, made quite a lot of money actually. Trolley dashes and blind cards and raffles. The next thing I know, they had a meeting at Blythe on the Saturday, the next Saturday, and asked me to be kit man, and they were coming down and shaking my hand as I had getting the job. And then the next thing I know, I was doing it, I've done it ever since. But it was a bit of a nervous thing they'd have to do because when you're a supporter, you go in the ground, you watch them, but you don't get close to them very much unless they come into the clubhouse and you say hello. But once you're involved, you're, you know, and there's some Mickey takers, you know, footballers. I have to admit, I'd heard of him before I came here because obviously I came as a, as a supporter for a number of years and I think he's well known in Blythe, so I knew of him, you know. But it's got to be said, you know, on a, on a serious note, um, he was responsible for all the kit. I used to do the boots, the shin pads, the underwear. Tony used to do uh, all the washing, cleaning, ironing. There's the washing machine, the dryer, and then you hang them up on the rails to the next game. And there's the box, the famous box where all the kit goes in. The, the, the team morale can pretty rapidly fall away if the kit's not there when they want it, if the towels aren't there, if the boots aren't clean. Um, it's a vital member of any team, the kit man. We're in the uh, home dressing rooms, right? This is where the most important thing happens. This is where the players turn up and uh, have a bit chat and get ready for the game. Is that right? Good fullback, this guy. Good fullback. My idea in life is footballers like to be loved. I used to stand here and tell them a few jokes, go around and shake everybody's hand before they went out. And, you know, give them a bit of a lift. They can be too serious at times and you've got to keep the mind off things, you know. He's jokes. <laughs> he always had a joke and I'm sure they came out with the Christmas crackers. Jokes, I used to tell jokes off the belt. I went to the pet shop the other day and he says, I asked the man for a wasp. And the man says, I don't sell them. He says, well, you've got one in your window. And things like that, he would just come out one line and people. <laughs> oh, God, here he comes again. For a number of years I was doing a presentation in the local schools, football as a business. I was told by the teacher to put a few funny stories in. And this one particular story got so famous that each consecutive year I went in, the kids were saying, can you tell us the story about the boot? Graham Fenton was here as player coach, bought a new pair of football boots. I think he paid about 300 and odd quid for them. And Tony looks after all the football boots as well. Well, I used to turn them upside down, get the tap running, wash them under the tap, get the mud off. And somehow I, I said, I have to get these dried somehow. So I put the oven on and I put them in the oven. <laughs> Someone shouted from the office, Tony, the missus is on the phone, he goes straight up home. And to a Tony be an obedient husband, he went straight up home. Oh, I smelt them. And I pulls them out, pulls them out and had melted all the blades. Top player like that, you know. How am I gonna tell him? Well we're playing away on the Saturday. I got on the bus, I say, I've got some bad news to tell you, Graham. Um I've melted your boots. What? Well, I, there was one a little bit better than the other. So I showed him the, the good one. And I says, what do you think? He says, no, I've, I says, I've got bunions. He says, I can't wear special boots. And I says, I can dare and show you the other one. Tony was actually stopped in Blythe and said, are you the man that put the football boots? in the oven. That was the crack in the ground and I went all around football for, for years. Presentation night came 
Uh, I've got a presentation to make. Mr. Graham Fenton, please come to the, uh, the stage, please. Oh, my God, such a laugh. But that was the history of that one. Unbelievable. Top player, I mean, could have burnt anybody's boots but his. Had to be his, didn't it? So, me and Harry, I got mine for 900 games. And Harry got his for 100 games. Oh, well, there's Peter Beersy there. We're at Newcastle. Peter's standing there watching. I'm carrying the bottles in. I didn't look very happy there, did I? It's 1,027 games. And I was amazed that I had done that, you know. I don't think that'll ever be big, do you? I've been going to retire for a couple of years now. He'd more or less decided it was his last season. Um, he'd asked us to help him. Um, so I was just helping him small way, bits and pieces. And then he, he was just advising us all the time for when I would take the role on. When I left, there was a lot of disappointment, but you can't go on forever. Actually, I used to have... Uh, well, there's... Um, there's Grimm's Fenton's other boots. I, don't, I didn't melt them ones, but look at that worn a bit. I used to just love the job so much. At my age, it keeps you young being amongst the, the younger lads, and I'm just get, fun to get on with, and I like a laugh, you know. I don't think I can be serious in my life. I don't think so. But I never get annoyed. I'd rather make a joke or anybody annoys us, you know. That's just me. <laughs> I'm very well respected down there, definitely. And that's what I like about it. I mean, I'll always be remembered for the Kipman and Blythe little tune. Always. <laughs>